Thank you, Madam President. Uh, let me begin by thanking uh, High Representative of the EU for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, His Excellency Joseph Borrell, for his uh, detailed uh, briefing. The UN and the EU project have a common origin with similar driving principles and values. In today's global context, the synergy in actions between these two organizations is important in addressing global peace and security challenges, as well as in advancing developmental efforts. Today's briefing, therefore, is very timely, and we welcome the same. Madam President, the EU has demonstrated repeatedly a leading role on global issues. The developmental achievements of its members, its enduring advocacy for de democratic values and rules-based international order have made EU a formidable force, voice in the multilateral arena. Its significance is also mirrored in the active cooperation between the UN and the EU. In the Balkans, the EU is at the forefront in promoting reconciliation, freedom, economic prosperity, and peace. On several occasions, the EU has brought together important stakeholders in situations of conflict by strongly supporting donor conferences, charting out peace plans, and supporting them through peacekeeping presence. India supports all efforts, including that of the EU, in promoting dialogue and compromise towards the implementation of the peace agreement. We also note the importance of the EU as a member of the quartet in the Middle East peace process and its role in the JCPOA. The role of the EU has been growing in Africa as well, alongside the African Union and League of Arab States. Its, its complementary, complementary efforts towards conflict resolution and in addressing security challenges, including terrorism, has contributed positively to the UN efforts in Africa. The EU is also extending support to bilateral and regional initiatives. The EU should continue to augment national efforts to address security-related challenges in Africa. The EU-AU partnership should focus on finding African solutions to African problems. Madam President, the world continues to be confronted with peace and security challenges, which have been exacerbated by COVID-19 pandemic, the Ukraine crisis, and its consequent food and energy security challenges. This is disproportionately impacting the global south. We need to strengthen partnerships and enhance linkages between the UN and regional organizations in line with Chapter 8 of the UN Charter. We need to pursue greater international cooperation and solidarity to overcome our common challenges. Regional organizations, particularly the EU, have a critical role to play in addressing challenges to security environment by promoting dialogue between the parties and dissuading external influence. In this context, my delegation has the following observations to offer. The EU has broken new ground in developing effective tools for crisis management. We believe that the EU has an important role to play in tackling global challenges with the UN at the core of multilateral efforts. The multilateral mechanisms need to work with regional organizations to ensure expeditious finding of equitable solutions. India has advocated the need for reformed multilateralism. We have been consistent in calling for a meaningful and comprehensive reform of the global multilateral architecture including the UN Security Council. Given the important role of EU in a reformed UN-centered multilateral system, it is but natural to expect EU to support ongoing reform efforts. The EU needs to do much more to take forward the reform agenda. The Ukraine conflict has impacted not just the EU, but the whole world. We support all diplomatic efforts to end the conflict, including resumption of talks between Ukraine and the uh, Russian Federation to end the conflict. The conflict is having a destabilizing effect with broader regional and global implications. The increasing oil prices and shortage of food grains and fertilizers have, are having disproportionate impact on the global south. The EU can and should play a leading role in alleviating the adverse impact of Ukraine crisis on day-to-day -day lives of people living in vulnerable countries. The EU has an important role to play in our continued fight against terrorism and other new and emerging challenges. India is the chair of the Counterterrorism Committee and the 1988 uh, Sanctions Committee. In this capacity, India would like, to, would like the EU to step up its efforts 
to make our fight against terrorism a collective fight and the one fought with zero tolerance without any double speak. We note the significant financial contribution of the EU member states to the uh, UN peacekeeping budget and voluntary contributions to UN programs. The contribution of the EU to the progress of global discourse on climate change and sustainable development goals has been noteworthy. We need to find a balanced approach to continue to meet these challenges without burdening the developing countries. Madam President, the India-EU strategic partnership is guided by our shared interests and values of democracy, pluralism, freedom, respect for the rule of law and human rights. We share a common perspective on many regional and global issues, including a shared commitment to promoting an international rules-based in order based on reformed and effective multilateralism. India and the EU have a common interest in, in, in ensuring security, prosperity, and sustainable development in a multipolar world. India's partnership with the EU is reflected in cooperation towards tackling current global issues such as COVID-19, climate change, terrorism, and strengthening multilateral institutions. At bilateral level, our partnership is manifesting through growing engagements at political level. It is also reflected in the launch of negotiations for trade and investment agreements and bilateral connectivity partnership. In the recent past, our strategic partnership has also witnessed an upswing, including holding the first ever joint naval exercises in June 2021, first ever security and defense consultations, and closer cooperation in maritime security. We have also established India-EU Trade and Technology Council in April this year to work on next-generation critical technologies and developing standards for them. India welcomes the EU's recently announced strategy for cooperation in the Indo-Pacific. We look forward to greater cooperation to ensure a free, open, inclusive, and rules-based Indo-Pacific premised on respect for international law and territorial integrity and sovereignty of all states. We have also launched a connectivity partnership to enhance connectivity in conformity with international norms, rules of law, rule of law, and respect for international commitments. In conclusion, Madam President, let me reiterate India's commitment to a lasting, mutually beneficial partnership with the EU. I thank you.